are you doing? I'm great, how are you? All right, no way, no way. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, yeah. awesome. So yes, you reached the Kicking It With KC show, and we are live here on xquadradio.com here on a Thursday, and I uh, can't wait, man, I can't wait for us to have this discussion with Anika, who is coming out of the Charlotte, North Carolina area, and uh, it is going to be exciting. She's got a great new single that she has put out, and I uh, can't wait to... Uh, you know, share with you guys. So anyway, how are you doing this evening? Hope, uh, you know what I mean, it's a good weather where you are. You know, we got us some inclement weather coming on this end. Yeah, I, uh, it's a tornado today and I was like driving down the road and I didn't even know there was a tornado, but my car was shaking. I was like, oh my God, crazy. Wow, wow, wow. Well, that's, that's not good. Bear with me for a moment while I get, uh, Go ahead and get us shared out here. I got a couple, uh, couple places here, little networks that I share us out to. Unfortunately, being a when you're a show host, you actually have to, you know, do several things, wear several hats. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing here. So let me go ahead and get it out. So we have actually a live uh, podcast audience on the audio side and also on the video side of the house we're actually streaming live on facebook live we're also on youtube um we're on twitch and i think that's it they used to have periscope but that's no longer uh, here anymore no more periscope <laughs> so give me one moment to make sure it says we're live here let me see if i can find my, my facebook for some reason i don't see myself Use this on the wall, but Facebook's a real temperamental thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's real temperamental out here. Sometimes it, it likes to, uh, you know, act right. Sometimes it doesn't. But I actually found it. There it goes. You have to refresh. Let me go ahead and edit my audience to public. And we are going to share it to a variety of locations. All right. There we go. Boom. There and there. And that's the other thing. When you run several uh, Facebook groups, you know you want to share it with everybody. Yeah. So, um, 18 years old, correct? Yeah. Just turned 18. Just turned so, 18. Yeah. And I got a tattoo. Oh, yeah. I think I saw yeah. that too. I saw that as your, uh, your gift to yourself, right? Yes, I was like, okay, what's the only way to celebrate turning 18? Get a tattoo and buy some lotto tickets. Hey, there you go. No, nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did win the lottery in case y'all were wondering. <laughs> it's not random. Right. Listen, you don't want nobody like, where is she at? Let me see if I can find where she's at. But yeah, yeah. And you got family members or something that you haven't talked to in a long time, all of a sudden showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Oh man, so that's, that's festive. I like the colors in the background. Um, I, I saw not only musically were you artistic, but also, you know, the whole uh, um, um, imagery. You know what I mean? Like that's the, that's the concept what you're going for with your whole imagery and your, and your uh, branding, etc. Absolutely. Like purple and green is the theme for this album. Because like the 2000s, which is what the album is based off of, 2000s pop, it's kind of in your face. Like everything from, from the movies, from the music, um, like if you just look at how people dress, it's like neon everything. Um, it's just kind of like in your face. So it's like, okay, we gotta kind of bring that back. It's so fun. Yes. Yeah. And and, that, and that's the that's the cool thing that I like about it. I like the uh, like I said, the, the track was awesome. We're gonna get into that. Um, but like you said, the whole vibe, everything that you you know that you're relaying, that you're putting out there, is definitely uh, brings you to that. And you know, did a great job. I gotta give a shout out to my man. John Wynn, who actually uh, uh, sent you my way. And me and John actually go way back when the music conference, one of the uh, first ones we did, he was key, and from the first one to the last one. So, yeah, shout out to John Wynn, Optimus Records. John's the best. Yeah, John's the best. Um, <laughs> he's awesome. So, he's like the funniest person ever, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, John is a great guy, you know. Right. 
anybody who hasn't met John, he has like, just he just like says things so bluntly, but they're so funny. And like, and I was working with Jay to produce this album. So um, Jay would just randomly slip into his impressions of John in the studio. And he'd just be like, well, I don't know. This song is a hit. <laughs> It was the funniest thing ever. Shout out to Jay Styles. I saw that as well. That yes, was awesome. That's awesome. Big time, big time producing that on that on that project. All right. yeah. Um, so we got a couple of things I was gonna ask you about here. Um number one, give me a little bit of background on how you got started. Like how'd you even go into the whole music thing? So I started writing music when I was 14 years old, and there's this pop artist named Melanie Martinez. Um, I was obsessed with her. I'm still obsessed with her. She's amazing. Um, and he had these videos on YouTube where she would just sit in her bathroom and play these songs that she wrote on her guitar. And I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. I want to learn how to write music. So I asked my parents if I could get a guitar. Okay. And as I learned a few chords, I was just writing music all the time. Like, I remember being in class writing songs. I would just like ask the teacher if I could go to the bathroom. And I would sit in the bathroom with like pen and paper and just like scream the lyrics. Um, so like, I was just writing music just for fun in my free time all the time. And then when I was 16, I produced a few demos. And then when I was 17, I finally um, used Quarantine to create the album with Jay. So it's wow. just a very natural thing. It's kind of very like organic. And I, most of the, all, every song that I've written is just like in my room, just with a guitar or a piano. That, that's, that's awesome. So, so not not just that you perform, you actually you're also a great songwriter. That's great, especially Thanks. starting you know starting that young you know and, and, and getting the creative juices going. But um, yeah, that's that's where it is. A lot of people really don't know that you know that's where the bread and butter is, and you know you you can, do, you can go a long way. Even if you aren't the artist yourself, you can continuously you know what I'm saying have people buy that that um, the music that you create. You know, since you can pave your path forever and still get, you know, ongoing residual income. Absolutely. And like songwriting is like really where it all started. Before it was singing, before it was playing the instrument, it's like I wanted to learn how to write music. It's because it was, it's a great creative outlet, number one. And number two, like I, I just love writing poems and I just like, like writing short stories and stuff. So it was a very easy thing to come to songwriting and, and take it to that musical medium. Okay. All right, and um, the next thing I actually wanted to know, as I looked at it, and you know, I, it's very dear to my heart. I call it my second home. Give me your thought process of you living in Charlotte, but your thoughts on how the Charlotte music scene is for you, and you know, you you, you being able to thrive and get a creative uh, support from the area and from the you know the staff, the musicians, the engineers, just. Just the vibe that you're getting. How, how do you feel like Charlotte uh, helps you with, with what you're doing? So I was born and raised in Charlotte, so I have been taking lessons here for a while. I mean, I I know, um, like it's just it's home and it's just what I know. So it's really easy to like when I'm at shows and stuff, or I'm playing like in a restaurant, my friends will come. People that I know will come. My parents, friends. Like it's it's so nice to see familiar faces here. And as far as like being in the studio, like with Jay and stuff, and, and actually being in person and working with him um, was fantastic because we got to rip off of each other's ideas, play on each other's strengths. And it's it's really nice to have um, everything in one place. Okay, okay. yeah, and that's, and that's a good thing. See, uh, for the music conference that we did, I always felt that Charlotte was full of resources, had so many different things, so many people that were doing different things. Um, and the potential you actually had, and I don't know if they're around anymore, but you actually had even a whole uh, plant that actually created a whole CD. I mean, from raw plastic, they actually did the whole creation of the CD, the plastic, the wrap, and then sending it out, which was crazy, you know? But it was yeah. because people always went to LA and New York and different places to get their CD done, but to have it right there in Charlotte and there was so many film things and so many other things that were getting done there and of course the venues to, to, to perform and so it was so many so many aspects and so many uh, resources that you know help you to succeed and, and that's Absolutely. what attracted me there yeah and I'm looking forward to see 
so much stuff will open up because in the past year everything's been shut down so like as right as I'm starting to put out music I haven't really been able to play live as much as I wanted to and meet people as much as I wanted to so I'm looking forward to seeing everything's open back up so I can finally you know put my music out there put myself out there and start to meet people yes yes I gotta give a shout out I got a chat room here I gotta give a shout out in my audio chat room to Miss Mocha Bella representing 305 in Miami uh, as well as on Facebook chat, we got Rail Scott coming out of Philadelphia. We got my man Eric Jones, uh, also a podcaster, uh, 504 Radio. He's uh, out down in Louisiana, uh, back and forth between Georgia and Louisiana. And also shout out to our, my guy Mo Cheese. So yeah, we got a couple people in the chat room that are everywhere. Uh, and, and, and like I said, it's, it, and when you're simulcast, you have to make sure that you you know, acknowledge all over the place. You have people chatting in YouTube, Facebook, the audio chat. So, you know, it, it, it's interesting, you know. Yeah. It, <laughs> all right. So the other thing I wanted to know was there was something that you had. I read it on your website and you were, you were speaking and you spoke a little bit about it. And that was the 2000 thing you said. You wanted to transport your listeners to a world of neon colors. Y2K environment. Give me your thoughts on you and growing up in the 2000s and what that is, what that encompasses. So I was born in 2003, which okay. means I got like Disney Channel at its at its best. Um, I got like everything, like what I've said before in terms of like everything just being so fun. Like it, people didn't take things really seriously um, in terms of fashion. Like mm-hmm. everything was kind of DIY, and I kind of and I love that. Um, and so it's kind of like a callback to the 80s in terms of some aspects of the fashion, but um, it's just so um, expressive. And I think I love that the most about the 2000s. And then as far as like, I just finished a movie called um, What a Girl Wants, and it's a 2000s rom-com. So like, it's a lot of inspiration from like 2000s, um, like movies as well, um, like Princess Protect Program and like Parent Trap and um, all of these like rom-coms because uh, there's something so nostalgic about them, not only like growing up, but also just like, it just like is what it means to be a teenager. Is like when I think teen years, I think 2000s, even though I'm a teenager right now, I think the 2000s. Um, Cause like Katy Perry, she had like the Teenage Dream album. Like everything just kind of aligned itself perfectly to just feeling so young and excited and energetic all the time. Okay, and exactly, I'm sorry, excuse me, ignorance. What exactly is wrong with them? Oh, it's like a, it's, it's a genre of movie. It's like, romantic romantic. Comedy? yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, Listen, uh, I, I, I don't know that, you know, but I thought like, okay, <laughs> we put that together. Okay. Rom-com. Okay. It's pretty cool. It's just like a teen movie pretty much, but it's just, okay. it's so fun, you know? Yes. Yes. That's awesome. You know? And, uh, they, listen, I have a couple that I actually like to watch and, 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 and I guess they, they're, like you said, teen, but you know, like I love Cobra Kai, I love watching that. I love um, the show comes on the CW, All American. So it's certain things that I, I pick yeah, up. Yeah, every book are great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, 2000 was a great, it was a great uh, time period like, for me. But you know, my area was 90s, of course. I'm like your parents, you know, that was my <laughs> area. But you know, 2000 was great as well too. That was probably my. Um, I guess when I started my professional side of my of my years, and you know, yeah. um, my daughter is same age as you, um, so she's 18 as well. But she'll be 19 in September, so she's a little bit older. But she's graduating uh, high school this year. And are you are you a senior high school? I'm a senior, yeah, graduating. Okay, awesome, awesome. Yep. So yes, and, and and how do you feel about that? Not having a not having your traditional senior year so you don't you know you know y'all don't have a traditional graduation prom and all those things how do you feel about that how's it how's it make you feel you know for this senior year to be the way it is it's definitely you know it's sad to say the least but I'm, I'm so happy that i got um the experiences that i did have this year in terms of music like i think um the album that i created last year would not have happened without quarantine it wouldn't have happened without being able to like sit at home and really contemplate and like work really really hard on and drive the direction of the album so i'm grateful in terms of music for my senior year um as far as prom so i junior year prom got canceled because of covid um 
and then this year it's not gonna happen either. So technically I never went to prom and I'm like, oh gosh, like that's such a milestone for high school. Right. Um, she wrote a song about it and it's the next song that's coming out in um, about a week. That's and it's awesome. called Your Everything. Yes, it's called Your Everything. And um, it is inspired by Barbie Girl. Like you know the song Barbie Girl by Aqua? Mm-hmm. Like I'm a Barbie girl. Yeah, that song. Um, so I was inspired by that whole album. And I wrote a song about prom and in the lyrics are You're a breath of air in a pastel spring, you're my vintage vice, you're my 80s king, you're my lifelong love and my prom dance fling. So it's just kind of like an ode to an experience that I don't think I'll be able to have, but I just kind of imagine prom to be like super in your face and fun and like young. Right. So what the song is definitely geared towards. Right. Wow. Wow. And the, and the good thing is like this experience, like you said, it allows you to dig a little bit more creatively because you are home and you, you know, you're able to, 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 to do those things, of course, get your work done. But on the other side of that, as far as being able to, you know, uh, get your music and you get, you know, basically make that do what it does. And, um, and that's, that's awesome, you know, uh, to take a situation like this and just turn it to something creative, you know. On That's some ends, cool. people, some somebody's gonna let it get get them down, and they'll feel like, oh, I can't believe it, you know. And they'll feel, <laughs> they'll feel a depression, but in your way, you know, you just have to turn this into, you know, maybe a great song the next one that comes out, you know. So, yeah, that's good, um, awesome. I mean, it couldn't have happened without that too, because I would be working up to like four o'clock in the morning on a song, <laughs> and so if I had school or if I had something else going on, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So even like time wise, it's just been very helpful. Okay, so you're um you're Indian American heritage. Tell me a little bit about the influence of your culture on your music. It's incredibly influential. Um, Indian music was really the first music that I was exposed to, mm-hmm. and I've carried that sound and that style with me up until Steal the Crowd, because Steal the Crowd is influenced by Indian and Eastern um, flavor and sound. So um, it's it's definitely influential and i think something very unique about indian music is like the emotion is it leads with emotion and it's kind of um like the way that the lyrics translate to english it's like so deep and so poetic um so even though i don't personally speak hindi you can still appreciate it even if you're not indian even if you don't speak the language right right and i, I learned so much too actually actually Previous job, I actually worked for Indian Corporation called Infosys. So I was there a couple of years there. So my whole team was uh, based offshore, and it was great. You know, those were my great, great friends. I still keep in touch with. So love it. They always, you know, help me to understand certain things. You know, certain people have certain religion. Like, like here we have a lot of different cultural differences, probably racial and all those different things. It's more religious on that end. You know what I mean? Different, you know, different people who have certain different religions and certain things, uh, and certain different languages that everyone speaks. And, you know, it was really interesting to learn that because, you know, I just had no idea of um, the culture there. And it was very, very refreshing just learning how, how you know, everyone thrives there on that end. Absolutely. And I definitely want to, like, bring in a lot more influence on my new work and, and the stuff that I'm working on is to bring a lot more of that Indian influence because I think it's something that needs to be, you know, deserves to be heard and deserves to be um, appreciated because it's not fully really explored. Like you had that one song, J Ho by the Pussycat Dolls um, right. back in the day, and then like Talk by Britney Spears. So it's um, it's there. I just think I, I really want to see it being fully explored too. Yep. Uh, shout out to Swan here. We have uh, Swan, actually, Black Swan, who's here in the chat room. Also, with, uh, so Sunday we have an event here for one of my shows, uh, the De Greatest Love Jones podcast. On Sunday evening we actually have an event. It's called the Slow Jam Battle. So Swan and Mocha actually will pick two songs from the eighties, two songs from I'm mean, sorry, two songs from the seventies, two songs from the eighties, two songs from the nineties, two songs from the two thousands, and one bonus song. And basically they'll pair them up head versus you know, head to head. It's no, it's, it's for fun, you know, it's not a, a, a quote unquote competition, but we just love to, you know, convene and just, you know, give bragging rights to who we felt was the best. But this will be the 14th um, one we had over the past year. So, so 
Can't wait. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and so we got another thing here, and tell me a little bit about your thoughts because you went with a, um, a, a upbeat, fun vibe, and we spoke about the 2000s. Uh, the first single that gave it a kind of like pop slash dance slash hip hop slash R and B vibe. It's got a mix of all of those things, yeah. you know, meshed together. Um, Tell me about that being a lead off single what made y'all choose that one to, 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 to come out to come out with. Um, so this single definitely like I think lyrically, I think it perfectly sets up who I am and, and what exactly this EP is gonna be. Um, it basically says like like I'm going to take on I'm gonna I'm gonna make my dreams a reality and I'm gonna do what I wanna do and, and live my life how I wanna live it. And it talks a lot about just being young and wanting to do so many things and actually having to like go out and do it. So, um, and it says this is in, in the bridge, it says, this is not my world. I'm just a girl who sits beside on her own. I want to learn, I'll brave the storm, give me the crown and throne. So if that doesn't tell you what you need to know, as far as, <laughs> as, far as music, like um, it's just about like, it, I think it's the perfect, example of who I am and, and how I view music. Yeah. It's like okay. okay. Nothing wrong with that. That's 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 awesome. You know, that's real creative and like I said, you being 18 years old, new, this is very mature. The music is mature, you know what I mean? As far as you, you know, knowing what you want, the creativity that you want. It's like you're a seasoned artist to be a new artist, you know? So <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love Thank it. You. So without further ado, we're going to just jump into that thing, you know, and we'll come back and keep chopping it up, but, you know, we were talking about this single, so we gotta, we gotta get to it, we gotta let the people, we gotta let the people hear it here. <laughs> Alright, give me one moment to set us up.
Wow. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we, <clears throat> we got back to it. Had to play it again. Had to let the people know. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna <laughs> rob you of that opportunity. You gotta get that out there to everyone. So yes, that is that is a banger there. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, I, I love it. I Thank love it. So shout much. out, shout out to everybody that took part of that. You know, you know, you from the songwriting, Jay Styles for the production, Absolutely. John and team for back in the mixing and the mastering and the management and everything else that you know everybody else is involved your your whole look your makeup your your costume your design everything so i do my it, makeup and my style. Oh, yeah awesome very very oh. good very good um is there a video that's coming um so we are i can't promise anything yet but all i'll say is that we have stuff coming <laughs> okay okay Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah. Let's see. So, gotta give a shout out to DJ Boss Lewis and uh, Chief Rocket Jersey Vern here uh, in the Facebook chat. Um, but yeah, they love it. It's a great, great song, man. Boss said he's also a DJ, loves it. So yeah. I know this thing gotta get out to the DJs. <laughs> it's gotta get out to the DJs so we can, you know, get this thing out there to the folks. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I had to had to get out my own. I was muted talking to you, but the chat room didn't hear me. <laughs> but yeah, let's get it out. We'll get this thing out to the to the to the to the masses, to the DJs, um, to everybody that you know that we have on our end because I actually run the podcast network with uh, DJs as well. Um, and then you know, mine is more so of a a national audience but the main thing is really getting it out there to um the clubs and to the you know to the to the people who are the influences out there the influences of, of the scene so i think maybe you know i don't know I, i'm sure john actually has and i saw that you actually getting spins right now with uh starfleet um and Hey, that's a that's a good that's a good organization as well. Like I said, they go back far with us as well. So, you know, if he can push it out to his DJs, his his circle, his record pool out there, and get it out to the masses, I love it. Yeah, uh, you know, it's great. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, that's not the part that you have to worry about. You know, you just make the you just make the music and let the back end yeah. do what they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So another thing here. Let me see. I had a question in regards to um and this is this is separate from the music but the spirit the the, the 2000 spirit the the color the the vibe the ambience that you put out what do you consider a fun time like okay if you just could do anything on a, a weekend you know what i mean when money is not an object nothing just no geographical COVID, get rid of all of that stuff. What do you consider a fun time? Um, honestly, like the simplest, I know you said money is no object and like time's no object, but um, the thing that I love the most is just like going with some friends and just going out for like a late night drive, like 10 o'clock to midnight, just going out for a two hour drive, just like blasting the music on some like random South Carolina back roads and just like screaming at the top of our lungs. And like, that's the most fun to me. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just like about being with people that I like and just having a very good time, like just doing very simple things. Nothing fancy. Okay. All right. That's simple. But, but hey, everybody has a definition of what they consider fun, you know? I mean, I could tell you like fun things, like, you know, like things that I want to do this summer, just like go to like Goodwill, get a bunch of like, just like get a bunch of outfits for a bunch of my friends, like style each other and then go out to dinner. Like just fun stuff like that, that I think would be really cool. Just um, <laughs> like I, when my friends come over, sometimes I'll just like, I'll drag them up to my room and I'll just like put on makeup on them and just like spend an hour just like painting their face. So I can't say that they find it fun, but I find it fun. <laughs> yeah, that ain't nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, hey, that's, 
Hey, you're 18. You, that's what you like now. You know what I mean? 19, you'll like something else. 20, you'll like something else. So, so that's a good thing. <laughs> um, five years from now, where do you see yourself? Um, I don't have to think, think too far ahead because, I mean, last year has proven to be so unpredictable anyway. So I don't, I don't know. I don't really see myself um, doing anything like really specific but i mean music's always going to be with me so i know that even if it's 30 years from now i'm still going to be writing music and playing the guitar and singing and hanging out so yeah i i don't know where exactly five years from now will be but hopefully somewhere good okay all right is your guitar in the room and try and put you on the on uh the spot but sorry i was wondering if your guitar was nearby <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but it's upstairs. I'm, right now. <laughs> I'm not in my own, in my room actually. Okay, this is messy. I would have. I would have. That's what me. that's what they do on uh. That's what they do with the with the rappers. Like, go ahead and rap some or sing it. Go ahead and sing something now. Acapella, but I get it. Um, yeah. Um. The single "Still the Crowd." Love the title. Love the you know what you wrote there you know um it's got a the name itself just you know as putting it out there you know it, it makes a person want to listen you know like what does she mean by still the crowd but it was great conceptually thank How you, you. Came up with that do you want to um so actually after i watched aladdin the live action aladdin not like the one from a while ago mm -hmm. the live action aladdin from 20 like in 2019 mm -hmm. um i was like i just love the soundtrack i loved everything about it so i was like okay gosh i so i ran up to my room of course sat down at a piano and i wrote the first verse to the song just to the crowd take a bow on your roller coaster so it makes perfect sense in the context okay. of aladdin because he's he's um quite literally a thief and um then he finds his way into the castle and he is pretending to be a prince but he knows he's not so it kind of it's kind of like taking a lot in story and applying it to my own situation as an 18 year old girl he's being like um i'm not a princess i'm wearing a nice dress you see but i'm bold and i'm reckless so um i took that first verse and when i was in the studio with jay we made a beat and we just went for it <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what it is. So, and chance meeting or someone paired you up the uh, the J Styles combination or did you did you? Yeah, um, like John knew J, so okay. John knew J, and um, he was like, "Hey, you got to get into the studio with him. He's great." And even on the first day of meeting Jay, it was just so natural. Like our collaboration just was effortless. Awesome. That is good. Yeah. Yeah, J J. I saw Jay has had a nice historic, uh, a, a long list of accolades, you know, <laughs> credentials, you know, you can't get bigger than Blackstreet and, and R&B. So Jay Styles, actually, I saw him, you know, uh, credited with a lot of different things. And hey, that's you can't get any bigger than that. That's 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 great to, to yeah. start off your first thing with a, a producer like that straight out the bat. So. Absolutely. Big up to Jay Styles on that. <laughs> great. <laughs> it was great, so great. much fun though, because like, like I said, it was a great collaboration. So it's like he helped me improve a lot of ways and like becoming more comfortable with my voice. And um, and again, like he's an R and B producer, so he was able to bring his own his own flair to it. Right. Um, and then me with like my pop sound, we kind of we just meshed really really well. Right. Right. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Um, now with the full ep you got coming out the vintage vice ep yes um so an ep i'm i'm thinking that's probably going to be eight tracks or so or less five five okay so you got five tracks coming on that um when do you have an expected uh date when that is going to release um sometime this summer for sure so, sometime this summer okay cool are the songs all written or are you still working on them it's finished. It's been done for a while. Yeah. I've just been, you know, it's it's been a long process to get here and I'm just very so excited to hear it, for people to finally hear it because um we got some fun songs coming up too. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. I love it. Um and I was laughing at the 
the what you wrote here and it was pretty cool as far as like I said we pretty much our whole interview pretty much wrote and summed up what this said but you said during the pandemic I, I, I sought comfort in the music I grew up with the effervescent pop sounds from Katy Perry Rihanna and Britney Spears I thought that high school would feel the way songs like last Friday night and only girl in the world and I want to go felt it's carefree and whenever I listen to those songs I want to roll the windows down in a car and sing into a water bottle with my friends so I, that's awesome man that's it's just that's like fun. When, when that's the windows are down, that your hair is like in the wind you're just like last Friday night <laughs> yeah you just like get into it yeah yeah I yeah. get it I get it <laughs> yeah all right, so um, let everybody know what your, your your contact information, your handles, how to get in touch with you. Um, and, you know, you're always welcome to come back here at any time. You know, we, I'm, hey, I'm here. I'm going to be here. You know what I mean? You go song by song. You want to, whatever, just want to come on and talk about anything. I'm here. So just let me know and we'll make it happen. But what, where can people find you? So you can follow me on um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all social media, um, TikTok at No This Is Annika. Annika is A N I K A. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can, and my website is AnnikaNation.com. Okay, and and please, if I pronounce it, because I may have said Anika, I have a friend oh, you're good. with the you're same good. spelling. <laughs> and I didn't right. ask how to pronounce Annika. I assume Anika because. I got friends with the name spelled the exact same way, but it's Annika. And that's the same thing as my name. My name is Kesey. People say, how you say it? But they may say Kissy or Kaisy. And I never, I never correct them. And you didn't correct me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's fine. You can call me like tomato for all I care. I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've gotten some weird, weird pronunciations over the years. So Anika is not even close to how bad it can be. <laughs> but yeah, it's Annika like Monica. Okay, awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Great, great, great. I appreciate you coming in and sharing, you know, sharing your song here with us and, you know, who you are. Like I said, great, got a great future ahead of you. Um, thank you for, you know, just being able to just be who you are. Continue to do what you're doing. I know you're going to go far with what you're doing and your craft. Um, great team, great management, got a great spirit you know shout out to john optimus records for you like i said being behind you that's a great guy uh jay styles great pedicure and uh history and things that he's actually involved with so you got a great team to push you out there so thank you so much kc thanks for having me all right take care bye have a good one you too that was annika you can check her at annikanation.com and on our IG at no, this is Annika. That's our that's our actual handles on all the social media. But uh, yeah, thank y'all definitely coming out, hanging out with me. I will re-edit this damn thing. <laughs> I'm gonna say hello, Kaisi. Yes, listen, I get Kaisi all the time, especially when I was speaking about my Indian coworkers. Yes, they all call me Kaisi. I'm Kaisi all day. Kaisy, even I know my name, they still call me Kaisy. But that is what it is, it just happened that way. Um, and, you know, I, I, a lot of times, like, I'm, I'm like her, I'm a good sport. I'm used to it being mispronounced so many times that, you know, I don't make any corrections on it. Uh, boss, I'm gonna get that over, I'll get that over to them to uh, send a single over to you so that, uh, like I said, we can do our due diligence of helping to push this thing out as well. So I got your email address there. And uh, we'll make sure we get that over so that we BRP can rock it, so that X Squad can rock it, or whoever else you know is interested in getting this single, and we get it pushed out there. But uh, yeah, great, great, great song. I'm gonna go back and edit, you know, and I snafu <laughs> in the beginning. That thanks to my brother who actually was here <laughs> in the Facebook chat that said the, the, the X Squad background music conflicted with Annika's track. <laughs> I'm laughing. He called it the X Squad ba background music. Uh, it's actually this uh, the OBS program whatever that does this video it had an embedded song in it and I couldn't find it. I had to go digging in the code I had to get real IT with it and you know to, to change the uh, the mp3 file and the web 
MP file or whatever that actually was connected to it. So not to get real technical, but to be able to, to change that out. I had made a, a upgrade or something in the software and then realized that the sound actually did what it did. But like I said, we'll fix that. No problem. I'll fix it in the mix. So later on tonight, you'll have a new edit on the audio and on the video. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, um... All right, all right, all right. Like I said, thank y'all for coming through, man. Your boy is out. I'm going to roll. And uh, hey, y'all get these shorter shows from your boy now. If I got a, if I got one guest and it's less than an hour, I'm out. Ain't no need to keep y'all in here hostage. You know what I'm saying? Get the rest of your day. So thank you, like I said, for coming out and checking with your boy. In case you didn't know. Changing listening habits. Be sure to get the mobile app on your mobile your mobile store, X Squad Radio Network. Be sure to check us out. Yes, squad up. All right, I'll holla at y'all. West West y'all. Bang bang. Throw them W's up. West side, when is this with your boy? D greatest from South Central. When is this at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? X Squad Online Radio Network. iHeart Radio, Spotify, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, we got more.
We all hate when we have unexpected car problems. Well, I am here to tell you about a viable solution. Bay 11 Auto and my man, Melvin. You have emission problems? Brakes need changing? Transmission slipping? Is your car just driving sluggish? No problem is too big. I live on the other side of town and I drive over an hour to a guy that I trust. Melvin is honest, dependent, and definitely not in the business to break your pockets. Come see the official mechanic, Melvin, at Bay 11 Auto. You will be glad you did. You can reach him at 1455 General Arts Road, Conyers, Georgia, or 404-295-5715. That's 404-295-5715. This is your boy, D. Gregg from South Central, and you tune into X-Squad Radio Network. Yeah, man.